Hey everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences bringing you Monday Minutes. And today we're going to talk about something that I completely sort of didn't see all this time. To be honest with you, I don't even know when this effect was added. I just don't remember it. Maybe it's just old age setting in, but uh, I was messing around uh, testing a few things today. As, as you know, I use flight tests, so I'm a, sort of an early adopter tester. I get all the newest things as soon as they're released in the code. And uh, it's often that the X-Lite says, hey, hey, got a new version. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna shut you down and re, re, you know, install the updates. I'm like, uh, okay, let me save first. And I get to uh, kick the tires on some of the newest stuff. Which is a blessing and and risky at the same time, but uh, I think the juice is worth the squeeze uh, to give feedback on some things. What we're going to talk about today is a, an effect that uh, I, I, someone tell me when was this added? I was looking at the release notes, and I honestly maybe I just can't read. But uh, this effect right here, this is the duplicate, and this. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to laugh at myself. This has probably been here forever, and I just haven't used it. I don't know. But anyway, I, I'm going to drag this, and I'm going to put this on... I'm going to put it on the window matrix. And right now, it's not going to do anything. It's going to do nothing. So I'm just going to pull it off to the side. This is a pretty cool, interesting effect that you might be able to use. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a couple of layers on, let's just, let's go with the tree topper. Uh, sure, I've got two layers there already. So let's go with a bottom layer of this wonderful effect called butterfly. Now I'm going to change this around a little bit. Maybe I'm going to, uh, let's give it a different style. There we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it just like that. And I'm going to force some colors here that I want, and I'm going to tell it to use the palette. So these are the colors we're going to get. Okay, and that's that's very, very, very pretty. Pretty. So pretty. Okay, fair enough. Let's put an effect on top of it. Let's just go with single strand. The world's greatest, most versatile effect known. And what I'm going to do here, and I'll isolate this so we can see it. Uh, I don't want that. I want to use the layer star setting. And I'm just going to put this on white. I'll leave that alone. And I'm going to tell us that I want five chases. And I'm going to soften it up a little bit with 3D fade. And that's what I want. I'm happy with the speed. That's good. And then I'm going to put this on top of the butterfly. And then I'm going to choose one is unmask. And so now what we have is using the motion of layer numero uno, but with the skins or colors and textures of layer dos. That's two, okay? Let me brush it up on my Spanish. So here we go. That's great, that's great. So what's with this thing down here? What's with the whole uh, this? Well, as you can see, it's automatically choosing the tree topper as an effect model to steal from. Okay. And it's stealing from layer one. What if I tell it instead steal from layer two? Oh, so now it's sort of getting a part of that. Okay. That's great, but that doesn't do much for me. Now, I can tell the window matrix group, if I do this at the group level, let's just do overlay centered, okay? And let's take this and change this back to layer one. Okay, so that's not anything super exciting, right? But we can also tell this window matrix group to override the palette to over or do override the duplicate colors. So if I had my own set of colors here I wanted to use, it would override what we're trying to duplicate. So basically what we're getting here is we're getting effect one on the topper, and it's just going across the same way that the effect would move on the topper. It's doing that across the windows because I'm at the group level now, okay? 
If I don't want to override any of that, I can turn all of these off. And then you're going to see here in a second that uh, if we override the color settings, we should be able to get red and green. But the problem is, here's the problem. The problem is, is that the layer setting on the tree topper is using, what are we using here? One is unmask. So it's supposed to be this color here, but we can override the layer setting as well. And if we override that, suddenly now the layer settings are not paying attention to it. And we're getting the even lines across each one of these window matrices. We can also override any layer blendings that we may have on there. And of course the colors. So now if I tell it to override the layer blendings or color, we can see we start getting a change here. We have red and green going across the window matrix. And I think that's pretty interesting. Okay, let's take it another level up. I'm gonna put something above and let's go with a pinwheel up here. Okay, so we'll just focus on this. And let's take this out. And let's put this in here. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a one is unmask. So let's just give this a few more. Let's just give it four. We'll thicken this up. Okay. And we'll slow it down just a little bit. Same thing. Now we can see the results of this. Is it gonna do anything interesting? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let's take this window matrix and let's turn all of these off. Now again, layer one, there's nothing on layer one. So we're not gonna see anything. So we have to tell this the layer of activity or effect that we want to steal from. So I'm gonna tell this layer two. And suddenly we're seeing a pinwheel happen on the windows. Okay, on the window matrices. Fair enough. So instead of this being treated like one big matrix, we're gonna to have to tell this to override some things. So if we override the palette, we can get the colors we want, red, green, based on what's chosen for this uh, duplicate effect on the window matrix. Turn that back off. We can override the duplicate color settings. We can override the layer blending settings and we can override, there we go, override the duplicated layer settings. So now we're getting the window matrices to look like very similar to the colors or at least the movement and shape of what's on. There we go, let's get that over, let's get all four of them in. Uh, this one just looks weird. Oh, there we go, okay. I must have it slightly askew. I wasn't able to see that flat on. So again, I think this is really interesting in being able to, instead of copy and paste and do certain things, with, in regards to taking an effect that might be on, I don't know, any type of model and sort of copying and pasting it. Now you can do the same thing, but you can start twisting it up a little bit by having complete control of overriding duplicate layers, uh, the color settings. So if I were to put this on blue, blue, white, then I'm gonna get blue, white. It's gonna transition back and forth, blue, white, blue, white. If I turn off the palette, then it goes back. If I turn off the color settings, that's not doing much there, but here, there we go. Let's see what happens if we get this. There we go. Now we have same movement, completely different colors because we're overriding the colors from the above effect that's on the topper. I think this is going to be a lot of fun to work with. I mean, I have only just goofed with it for about 10 minutes before I made this tutorial. I think this is pretty interesting stuff. And I bet, I bet, and, and uh, let's see if I'm right, if I were to copy this and paste this effect here, now I'm completely winging this, so let's see what I can do. Can I take something like this and start manipulating it? I can, indeed I can. So adding more layers and effects and combining them with the duplicate 
That has me interested. That has me interested. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to play with that. And I suggest you do the same thing. Check this out. Try this whole little duplicate thing and let me know how you're using it for any of your sequencing. Drop a line in the comments and say, hey, you know what? That's really cool. I've been using it. You missed the boat. And uh, this is kind of cool stuff it can do for me. I'm, I'm very curious. I just love the development of, of x Lice this year. Just absolutely love the number of people involved in it. This is a great time to be in this hobby, seeing such wonderful new attributes added to the software. All right, it's going to be a short Monday Minutes. That's all I've got for you. Kick the tires on this thing. Give it a try. Let me know. And by the way, and if it hasn't been released to the public and it's only on test flight, well, it'll be there soon, I'm sure. Gotta go. We'll catch you next week. I'm Ron. This has been Monday Minutes. We'll see ya.